And at this point, it's Senator Hassan next, and Senator Cantwell will uh, be chairing, and we'll get everybody in. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Chair Wyden. I want to thank you and the ranking member for uh, this hearing, and thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here today. You and I spoke last week about the cyber attack on Change Healthcare, the payment processor for hospitals and doctors all across the country, and the impact that this hack is having in New Hampshire, and I raised the issue with the President on Monday. As you and I discussed, this hack is having a really outsized impact on small and rural hospitals, including four critical care access hospitals, critical access hospitals in New Hampshire, which have not received what amounts to 98 percent of their expected payments for the last three weeks. After you and I spoke, at least one of our hospitals received approval for aid from the Medicare program, so thank you very much for your quick attention. While this has been some progress, our providers are facing a really long road ahead. So this morning I met with Andrew Witte, the CEO of United Health Group, which owns Change Healthcare, and, following my, and this meeting followed my push this week to urge uh, United to step up and provide more urgent aid to providers. So Mr. Witte and I had what I would call a constructive conversation this morning. United Health Group has made new commitments to provide cash aid today to the providers in my state who need it without any unfair or risky terms. What will HHS's role be in the coming days to ensure that United Health Group is following up on these commitments? Senator, first, thank you for the work that you're doing to make sure that not just in New Hampshire, but generally right. that uh, United Health and other payers step up. Right. Uh, we, as you probably know, we had a meeting earlier this week with the payers, right. with United Health Group and providers, and we're now having a follow-up meeting with specifically with the payers okay. uh, on Friday. And what we're doing is essentially saying to the payers, many of whom actually have already received their payments right. from Medicare and Medicaid, they're holding money, and providers aren't getting paid. We're saying to them. You need to start making payments. While you may not receive the actual bill, you have a general sense month on a monthly basis right. what these providers bill you. So there's no reason to not work out an advance payment to these hospitals and other doctors and other providers. Okay. Well, I look forward to continuing to work with you and your team and making sure United Healthcare payers generally are doing what they need to do, especially with our critical access hospitals. Um, really, look forward really to important. working with you. Yep. Uh, I want to turn to a different topic now. I was really pleased that the department's proposed budget included $1.6 billion for state opioid response grants. These grants have helped New Hampshire improve its response to the fentanyl crisis. In the past, you and I have discussed the program's impact and the importance of continuity of funding here so our providers can really plan and really work towards an overall comprehensive prevention, treatment, and recovery strategy. The most recent appropriations language language requires HHS to, and this is a quote, avoid a significant cliff, close quote, for any state when allocating funds from year to year. States have to have clarity from the administration regarding how the new funding amounts will be calculated over the next two years. Will you commit to having your staff work with mine to ensure that this information is clearly communicated to states as soon as possible? You absolutely have that commitment. Thank you. Um, and finally, last week's set of government funding bills contained multiple provisions to support addiction treatment for those on Medicaid. One of these bipartisan measures, which I worked on with Senator Blackburn, permanently requires Medicaid programs to cover all medications used to treat opioid use disorder, a requirement that was set to expire next year. The funding bill also included bipartisan legislation, which I worked on with Senators Thune and Blackburn, to expand access to short-term residential addiction treatment under Medicaid. Mr. Secretary, can you discuss how these provisions now signed into law will be supported and expanded upon by the program in the President's budget? Senator, and first, thank you very much for your commitment to this issue and for being so dogged in pursuing real results for folks. We're going to try to make sure we're partnering with states and local communities to make sure that they're aware that Medicaid can actually now be more helpful. Uh, we have to wait to see how they structure their programs because okay. they're the ones that operate them, but we want them to know that Medicaid wants to be in the game. Okay. Thank you very much, and I yield my time, Madam Chair.